Hello, in this video we're going to cover proportional measurements. Proportional measurements refer to how does the width compare to the height? How does one part compare to another? And we have a special tool that we use to measure propor proportions. We have dividers. So we can use our dividers to measure how the width compares to the height of any object. We're going to look at a very, 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 very simple form um, as an example for, for how to use these things. Okay, looking at proportional measurements. I'm gonna be a little ridiculous here with my example, but hopefully it'll make sense, this idea of proportional measurements after, after this very simple example. Let's say we want to draw this, this rectangle. So I'm going to do the best job I can in, in drawing that particular rectangle. Now, is, is this a good drawing of that rectangle? Yeah, not so much, right? Uh, no bueno, this is definitely not a good drawing of, of that rectangle. How could we how could we fix that? Well, we could use our pair of dividers. I'm going to put one point here and one point there. Ta-da! And then I'm going to measure across. We have one, two, and it looks like that's ending a little bit over a half, maybe even three quarters. So we have one and we're gonna say three quarters. Then down here, we're going to repeat that same relationship. So I'm gonna put a point here and a point there and I'm going to measure across. We have one, we have two. And remember, we said that this was one and three quarters. So we have one and three quarters might be somewhere over here. Now, hopefully, I know it's not perfect, but hopefully you can see that this is a better drawing of that rectangle. So the size is different, but how the height relates to the width is similar. So different size, but there's a similarity in how the height and the width relate to each other. That's proportionate. This is proportionate to that. Okay, so how do we apply this to our drawings. So we're going to start by just choosing a distance, let's say from here to there, that's going to act just like this as a me measuring unit. So remember how we took this and measured across. We're going to do the same thing with this. We're going to take this distance and measure across. So I'm gonna use my dividers. I'm gonna place one point here one point there, and I'm going to measure across. We have one, we have two, and I'm just gonna throw in a third just, just for kicks. I'm finding it a little bit difficult to record this, this part where I'm using my dividers in front of you. Um, just bear with me with this. Hopefully this will, even a poor, poor camera job will make sense here. So I'm going to focus now on um, placing one point of the dividers on the top of the box and one point on the bottom. And let's see if I can fo use the camera to focus on my um, dividers for a moment so you can see. So one point's going to go on the top and one point's going to go on the bottom. And then I'll rotate and measure across. We have one and we have two. And I'll do this again 
um, but with the focus on the T box. So we have the same um, dividers on the, with the point on the top, the point on the bottom. And then I'm going to go one and then two. So when I measure, um, and you guys saw me measure, but when I measure, I see that in reality, the T box should end a, a little under one and a half. So if this is a half or about a half, the T box should end just a little bit under that point. So maybe like, maybe like approximately over here. I'm gonna take an angle measurement to figure that out. Now, we just did a horizontal measurement. We could do the same on, on that side. Um, we could also now use this distance to measure vertically up. So one, two, don't think I'll need a third, but I'm going to go for it. And it's off camera anyway. So that would be my third measurement. Let me see if I can raise the camera a little bit. We'll have to probably turn, turn it off and readjust. Okay, so we are readjusted. And just so you can see everything in, to, in its uh, totality, what, what I did was one, and I put a measurement there. Then I did two, three. All right, I, I'm, something tells me I'm gonna face the same problems here with focusing on uh, the still life and my dividers at the same time. But um, we're gonna do our best. I put one point on the bottom and one point on the top, the divider points. I'm gonna raise it up one. And I see that the brown box is just a little bit above one. And everything, the brown box is gonna end definitely before the halfway, um, one and a half. Okay, so just a reminder of what we did here. We measured up one and then there's that two mark over there. Just so it comes across more easily on, on camera, I'm gonna make a mark like that, just so you can see it. And I'm off camera just remeasuring. I, I always remeasure. So up one, I notice, okay, that brown box is just a little bit above that one mark. How much? Well, golly, maybe that much. So that means I have to drop this line all the way down there. Taking an angle measurement. I'm measuring again. So this is a kind of a major change, but that's okay. This is this is all about learning. So when we fix our mistakes, we're developing our sense of intuition. 
So always be happy when when you have a, a mistake that you can fix because you're building technique that way. You're teaching yourself how to, to draw. So measuring is empowering. So I'm going to work on this more in a, in a later video to show you how I would finish this. But the point of this video was to talk about how to use dividers. And I went through with you um, on how to use the dividers to measure across and how to measure up. I want to show you a side view of, of how I use the dividers. When we use dividers, it's the same as when we take a, a perceptual grid measurement, when we take an angle measurement. We're going to keep our left eye closed. Ideally, the elbow would be locked. There's a focus on keeping our um, wrist in a, in a locked or still position. And notice that my dividers are perfectly flat, meaning they're not like this or like that. I try to keep them as flat as possible. So this is the correct position for, for taking vertical and horizontal measurements. If I had to say like, what's the, the thing some people, the most common thing that people get wrong when they try to use their dividers, the most common error, it's just that. It's that their, their um, elbow is not locked they're moving their wrist around and the position of the divider is not neutral. It has an angle. So if you're having difficulty using your divider, go through each of those points and ask yourself, could you make improvements on each of those areas, whether it's holding your divider at a flatter angle, whether it's being more aware of how you use your wrist, are you using your wrist? Remember, the idea is, is that we're keeping, um, we're keeping this part of the body still.